Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Women's World Association, here today to bring you in another exciting Black Buddhist Lectures. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice in the world, and we are the only Black Buddhist organization in the world that do not have Asian Buddhist masters. When we learn that the Asians educated all Black history, culture, and language from the Buddhist teachings, we educated them out as our teachers. Now, today we're going to bring an exciting Buddhist lecture. My lecture today is Black Activists Gets Kicked Out of Nichiren Shu Buddhism. In 2012, I made a decision that I would leave the Nichiren Sho Shu religion. Now, at the time, my friend Shaka Kalafani had joined Nichiren Shu. So I contacted Shaka, I said I'd like to know more about Nichiren Shu. And I had people who the Nichiren Shoshu had turned down, who discriminated against because they didn't want me to be successful. So I went to meetings at Shaka House, and you see me at the Buddhist meetings at Shaka House. And I told Shaka, I said, Shaka, let's get this thing going, and we're going to call this thing the Proud Memphis Proud Black Buddhist. And Shaka had agreed to it. Now, but what happened was, Shaka is a member of the Nitrin Shu Temple in Houston, Texas. And Shaka, the woman who is the head priest, was the first African American. Nitrin Shu, Nitrin priest in the world. And she, her name was Mukai Shonen. And Mukai Shonen got with Shaka and says, Man, you guys, we can't be having no religion, talking about no proud black, a Memphis proud black Buddhist. We cannot do this. See, what I didn't realize was Nitrin Shu, like Nitrin Shoshu, and like the SGI, they are Mahayana Buddhists. And they practice the Sanskrit teachings that educate all black history, culture, and language from Buddhism. So on November of 19 of 2013, I wrote a letter to Nichiren and Shu. And I asked them what was their policy regarding African Americans. And when I wrote that letter, to Nitrin Shoe Heads, Shaka got mad and he wrote me a nasty letter. Shaka called me a terrorist and he called me a terrorist and he said I was no longer welcome at his house anymore. And this Muke Shonen, who was his priest, Shaka and I were the best friends. The man was like a brother to me. Shaka was an independent trucker. And when he, when I borrowed money on my house, I borrowed $100,000 on my house. I told Shaka, I said, man, I got money and you a trucker. I loaned that man $10,000 to, to buy his own tractor trailer truck so he could be an independent business guy. He was a guy who lived in my house, a man who I loved so much as a brother. We traveled all over the world together. But Shaka followed this half Japanese woman by the name of Mukai Shonen. And Mukai Shonen had, and the way that they teach Nichiren Shu Buddhism, Shaka said I was no longer welcome in his house. And there I was, ladies and gentlemen. And this is November 2013, and I had to make a big decision. Cause in 2013, when my friend and my brother, who I love so much, we had traveled the world, we did kickboxing together. When he turned his back and said, I was no longer welcome at his house anymore. The members of Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism had all turned their back on me. 
because the Nitin Shoshu priest told them, do not associate with me. There I was, Nitin Shoshu, Nitin Shu, and the SGI. I really did not have a Buddhist friend in the world. I was trying to get the priest to honor Dr. Ma with the king. Let's make our Buddhist practice inclusive of our black history, our culture, and our language. But what happened was everybody associated with the Japanese and they turned their backs on me. Now, there I was, a Buddhist. I had been a Buddhist for 43 years and no Buddhist friends. My wife, who I had brought into Buddhism, she saw the horrors of associating with the Japanese sects in that they take black people and they make them attenuate the culture, the history, and the language. And these people become robots and they are no longer active in their community, but they become a part of Japanese cultural imperialism. What had happened, ladies and gentlemen, that I had nowhere to go. But Shaka had wrote this letter to me, and I was trying to help this woman in Zambia who wanted to get a Gohanzan, who wanted to learn. And Shaka says, you can help this woman with your almighty website. And what happened was, even though I had nobody, the one thing that I had, what had happened, ladies and gentlemen, is that in 1998, when I started the Proud Black Buddhist website, a new culture, a new entity had emerged. A new, what we call an insentient being called the internet had emerged. And what happened was, I became the number one Buddhist black Buddhists in the world. In all of our world, ladies and gentlemen, there is not one independent black Buddhist set in the world. And so the only person that really, who was a Buddhist, who was independent was Anthony Elmo. So in January of 2014, because I had what was called the Proud Black Buddhist website, I had what is called an agorism. That was, now that we had computers, and everybody's computer is a cell phone, and when you Google Proud Black Buddhist, there's Anthony F. Elmore, the number one Buddhist in the world. In that, I was given the task and the honor of being able to teach people Buddhism. And God was right there in that I was given the Proud Black Buddhist website. So in January of 2014, I launched an organization called the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. I not only stood alone, I learned how to become a black Buddhist in America. I became the most knowledgeable Buddhist in the world in regards to black history, language, and culture. I posted more black Buddhist videos, history, and culture than anyone in the world. We literally created a black Buddhist set and we have now launched our new proud black Buddhist website. We have the most comprehensive black Buddhist website in the world that when we say black, we mean culture, not race. We do not discriminate, everyone is welcome. We are a cultural organization, not a racial organization. Please join and come with us in the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. Now, there you got it. As a black man, I was kicked out of the Nitrin Shu Buddhist set. But that's a good thing. Because of what happened to me, I was able to start the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. Thank you very much.
power us to help A brand new mission to help the others make a big decision We bring to you as most for religion It's not the religion that you expect It's all about the law, the cause and effect The vulture to the middle of the call of teaching We do a lot of wisdom preaching No more life with any drama We change the words and change our karma We bring to you the new rule of way We bring to you the new way to pray